Good day, everyone. Welcome to Lead Wisdom. Today is day 21, and we are looking at Proverbs 21. Uh, my name is Linda Chiedza Chashe Makoni, uh, based in South Africa. Uh, today, I just want us to look at the whole chapter of Proverbs 21 and see the nuggets or the wisdom that the Lord wants us to have. Before we begin, let me just pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for everyone we have just logged in. We thank you, Father, for anyone listening to your word at this present moment. Thank you, O oh Father, for your word says we can come, come boldly to the throne of mercy. Father, we come before your presence and we say, Father, speak through me. Let the Holy Spirit guide today's word and we believe and trust in your name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Uh, let me just jump in for Proverbs uh, 21. As I looked at this, it says the Lord considers the heart. That's the main topic that we have. And it starts by saying, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord, like the rivers of water. He turns it wherever he wishes. I begin by looking at the king's heart. We live in a world where we all want to be connected to people who are in authority. We all want uh, to have connections or we want to have people in authority that are standing in the gap of wherever we want. But I realized that the currents that we need is wisdom because having the king's heart or what we refer to as the divine helpers who can actually guide their hearts so that you can have favor with them. So the word of God is saying, it is in the hand of the Lord. Whenever we need to prosper, wherever we need to understand something, we should also understand the currents of people. Instead of just the king's heart, I also see it as anyone's heart that we might want to have favor with. And the first relationship that we are supposed to look at it's the relationship between you and the Holy Spirit because it brings the anointing. What is your relationship with the Holy Spirit? The next relationship that you need is between you and the word of God because it brings understanding. And you also need the relationship between people. No wonder when you read in the New Testament, it says, in Jesus found favor both with God and with men. So what we need is the favor of men. So verse one, it already shows us that for us to have the favor or the king's heart, we need to go to God because he is the one who is holding the hearts of men. So whenever you find you need favor from men, whenever you want uh, someone else to understand you, the word of God says, go to God, go to God and say, God, may I have favor in my job. May I have favor in my family. May I find favor in the country that you position me. May I find favor in every place that my footstep. So the wisdom that the Lord wanted us to know is to understand it is only him who has the hearts of man. As I moved on to Proverbs 21 verse 2, it says, every way of man is right in his own eyes. I'm reading from the New King James Version, but the Lord weighs the heart. When you look at it, people, they are usually right in their own eyes. We usually justify our action. If today someone would come and say, Chiedza Chashi, one, two, or one or two areas you did not do well. I might want to start doing justification. I might not even use the word of God to see which areas am I not doing well. So here, uh, King Solomon was trying to show us that 
in every way it might seem right to us. We might have certain action that we do that might even seem right to us, but God is saying that might not the, be the way. Come to the spirit, come above, come and understand from my spirit so that you are able to judge, you are able to weigh. And most of the times, the word of God already says in Proverbs, do not lean on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit. Submit to him and you will make your path straight. Already, God is saying our own ways might not be the right ones. When we actually submit to God and say, God, I don't know my heart. My heart is deceitful. Check or search my heart. Whenever we allow God or the Holy Spirit to search our heart, because our heart might show the true straight of where we are at each moment. Normally, when people judge or people look, they usually look at the outward appearance. But the Lord says he looks at the heart. My prayer for us is to say, just like in Ezekiel 36, verse 26, God, I pray that you give me a new heart and put a new spirit within me. Give me a new heart. Give me a new heart that desires your desires, a new heart that sees according to the way that you see, a new heart that judges according to the way you judge. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, just like in Psalms 19 verse 14. So the Lord is always looking at our heart. What is your heart condition as you are praying? We are looking at wisdom in this month, but what is the condition of my heart? Example might be, we are praying to have certain things in our life. We are praying and trusting the Lord to say, God, move this mountain. But deep down in our heart, there's a prayer that simply says, Lord, once we have provided this, I know one or two people will see. So the real reason you are praying is not for the Lord to bless you, but you just want to show others. So our heart condition is what the Lord examines. And funny enough, you know your heart condition can also make room for the devil to manipulate because he knows deep down you have pride. Deep down you are selfish. Deep down you want to prove to the world. So yes, you will give you the desires, not because you are supposed to have them, but because he knows that deep down, the pride will come out. So our prayer should always to say, search me, O Lord, search my heart. O Father, give me a new heart. Give me a new heart that loves the way you love, that understand your word. A new heart is what you need. And as you continue to look at Proverbs 21, it talks about to do righteous and justice is more acceptable to the Lord than the sacrifice. For here, the Lord is simply saying, we need to walk in righteousness. That is more acceptable to God. Our prayer should be, we are righteous by him. We were made righteous by Lord Jesus Christ. Righteousness is not our own walking. It's not our own way of doing things. But it is what the Lord is doing through Jesus Christ, through us. And at times we should also come to the understanding that righteousness is not being religious. We need to come to understanding what is righteousness according to God? How do we walk in that righteousness? And the Lord continues to look at the heart. 
when you go down with uh, Proverbs 21, you see what a proud heart does. It says in verse 4, and a hot look, a proud heart, and the plowing of the wicked are seen. The moment your heart is proud, it begins to focus on areas that are wicked. It begins to make plans that are not good. And at the end of the day, all wickedness will lead to sin. But the Lord even says, but the plans of the diligent leads surely to plant. But for those of everyone who is hast, surely to poverty. The Lord is trying to say, in all our plans, we should be diligent. We should continue to seek the face of the Lord in all our plans and continue to say, God, guide us. God, show us the way to go. Because in moments of life, when our heart desires are not checked, when our heart condition is not looked or is not served by the word of God, you surely see people making hasty decisions, not because they want to, but because they are quick to want their heart desires to be met. And some of these ways have even made people to quickly do maybe the rich schemes. But at the end of the day, it says it surely leads to poverty, meaning they did not get the understanding, they did not get the wisdom on how to act. And when you go with verse 6, it says some, because of the desires of their heart, it gives them a lying tongue just for them to get treasures. In this world, we have seen people who try to scheme others from their money, who try to scheme people. It leads nothing else but to death. And the Lord says you will destroy the wicked because they refuse to do justice. But the Bible always encourages us in verse 8, the way of a good man is perverse, but as for the poor, his work is right. We should always ask God for a poor heart. Father, I pray for a pure heart. Father, I pray for a pure heart. Search my heart. Search my ways, O Lord. Why? Because it is better to dwell in the house of the Lord but than to dwell in the corner of a house door. When you continue to read Proverbs 21, it says you can actually share a house with a woman who talks too much, meaning our mouth, we have to watch what we say. At times, people run away from us because of our mouth, not just because of our character, the way our mouth will be, it already shows the current heart condition. And when people see the way that we use words, the way we have said, they would rather not be part of us. So in as much as we would say, people are running away from me, I can't have friends. People do A, B, C, D. Have we checked our mouth? Have we checked what comes out of our mouth? Which words are coming out? For the word of God says, um, Life and death lies in the power of your tongue. So we should always continuously search and say, God, which words are coming out of my heart? Which words am I saying to other people? What is my heart conditions? We always need to continuously say certain words. Otherwise, you will find that there will be no favor. Even in the hearts of your neighbors, you might not find favor because of the ways that you have altered. And the word of God continues to remind us that the righteous, they consider the house of the Lord. And as the Lord has blessed us, we should always find ways or means to hear the cries of the poor. The cries of the poor 
it's not only the poor financially or materialism. The Lord is also saying, hear the cries of the people who wants to know the Lord. Hear the cries of the people who wants love, who wants understanding. Wherever you are, ask the Holy Spirit, Father, give me the, the ears that they can hear when people are crying. We have so many people in our lives, in our neighborhood, who would have committed suicide. Others are depressed. And we always wonder to say, Lord, how do I help the poor? How do I help my neighbor? We should always continuously understand and have that listening ear to say, oh Lord, may I hear, may I just be a listening ear to my neighbor so that whenever I also cry so that I can be heard. There are moments where we cry to be heard. It might be in the place of the kings. We might be crying in the place of promotion. There are so many areas of our life that are bleeding, that are, we are crying to say, God, I'm praying for your divine touch. But the same way you are praying to say, Lord, I want to have that divine touch. I want to have that divine encounter. May you also become a blessing to someone. The word of God says we are blessed to be a blessing to other people. Always ask yourself, am I being a blessing in my existence? Am I being a blessing in my career? Am I, am I being a blessing where I work, in my community? Am I being a blessing? It is actually joy to do justice. Whenever you see any area where there is injustice, it's always good to stand up and say, Lord, here there is an injustice. That's what the Lord loves. When you continue to read Proverbs 21, it gives us nuggets on what we are supposed to do. He who loves pleasure will be a poor man. He who loves wine and oil will not be rich. On Proverbs 21 verse 17, the Lord is also searching our hearts to see what is in it in our hearts. Do we have the fleshly desires? When we begin, we say the word of God actually wants us to change our nature. We need to be born of God. We need to understand what does it mean to be born of God. It means our nature has changed. Not just our character. Not just our ways of acting. But the Lord wants us to change our nature to be the one like God. Where even our desires are aligned to the spirit. Not just the fleshly desires. Because you find out when you love pleasure, you might find out you would do or you act without wisdom. Because the fleshly desires are also, I want to be satisfied now. I want people to see this is for me. So the word of God continuously reminds us to say, what are your desires? Are they fleshly desires or their spiritual desires? And you find out once our desires are of the spirit, Proverbs 21 verse 20 actually says, there is desirable treasure and all in the dwelling of the wise. So when you go to the word of God, that's where the treasure is. When you are in the spirit, you find out all your desirables are actually fulfilled because that's where the treasure is. And I love the scripture because it says, and oil in the dwelling of the wise. When something is referred to as oil, it means it never runs dry. 
we once talked about the wisdom that we need to say the earthly wisdom. It can come to an end. It, it has its limitation. But when you have wisdom from above, it's like an oil. It never runs dry. And it means even what you desire, the treasures that you have, the Lord continuously supplies. No wonder the word of God says, seek first the kingdom of God and all righteousness shall be added to you. And he who follows righteousness and mercy finds life, righteousness and honor. The moment we begin to walk in wisdom, the moment we begin to walk in the spirit, we find life. For the word of God says, life is spirit. We find honor. It means in places where we did not even dream to be, the Lord will make a way for us. I love how Joseph, the dreamer, the Lord had already showed him the great man that he was going to be. Even though the events of life were showing the opposite. When you continue to read in the Old Testament, it says, and the favor of the Lord was with Joseph. So it was that favor of the Lord that actually brought honor. And today I just want to say some of the events of life have made you to feel like you are a Joseph. Some they've brought you to prison. Some have given you a label to be called a divorcee or a divorced wife. Some have even labeled to say the single one or the barren one. So these are labels that people give, especially when you are still walking in your path. But today the Lord says those who follow the righteous way, they find mercy. And the Lord will still honor you the same way you honored Joseph and brought him to the palace. It's the same way that God is going to honor you in your life. But as you can see, it was righteousness that Joseph wanted. He continued to walk in the ways of the Lord. He continued to say, Lord, guide me. Let your wisdom guide me. Holy Spirit, lead me. And verse 23 already sums this up because it says, whoever guards his mouth and tongue keep, keeps his soul from trouble. When you read about Joseph the dreamer, there is no day when he came to complain, to say, why me, Lord? Why is this all happening? But you said people are going to bow down, but I haven't seen it. So at times, the wisdom that we need is actually to guard our mouth and our tongue. Which words have you been saying? concerning your life, concerning your situation, concerning your word. The word of God continually says, confess the word of God, confess it aloud. Uh, personally, I have found uh, confessing the word of God aloud to myself has made all, has changed me or the way I used to view life. Whenever I wake up, my pastor was like, wake up and say to yourself, when you look in the mirror, I see you, God. I see the beauty that you are doing in my life. Thank you, Father. I see you. So the moment you start confessing the word of God, you make it a reality in your life. We want to change our world, but we change it with our words. What we say, what we confess is what we become. And the Lord is gracious. Whenever we had said the words that were against ourselves, the words that we have said that were without wisdom, probably at the moment of pain, you might have uttered words which the devil might want to use against you. But the Lord is merciful, says, come to me as you are. So Father, right now we come to you and say, Lord, at that moment where we have said any words without wisdom, we ask for your mercy. We ask for your mercy over those words. We ask, Father, to retrieve them 
And Father, we speak words of blessings. We speak the words that you would want us to say to ourselves. For when you look at the Bible, when the Lord wanted to create the world, he used these words. He would say, and it was good. We pray, Father, to have that wisdom in our life. May we guard our mind and tongues so that we can preserve our soul. The wisdom that you can just see and understand in Proverbs 21 will make you want to say, Oh God, at every moment, renew my mind. Renew my mind. I pray for a renewed mind, a mind that knows who I am. The mind that knows my identity with Christ. And also to understand that the desires that we have can actually kill us. When you look at uh, Proverbs 21 verse 25, it says, The desire of a lazy man kills him, for his hands refuse to labor. It just shows me that there are times where the desires of our hearts can even kill us, especially when we refuse to labor. The word of God already shows us how we are supposed to work, how you will bless the work of our hands, how he wants us to be in partnership with him. Because each desire that we might want to have, it might kill us. My prayer for everyone listening is to say, God, search my desire. Do not lead me to the desire that you will kill me. May I not refuse to labor. The word of God encourages us to be patient, encourages us to persevere, encourages us to continue with the way of the Lord. How many times did our desire make us lose that path and walk in a different path? Which desires have been planted in our heart? Father, uproot anything that is, that is in our heart that was not planted by you. No wonder the Lord says, hide my word in your heart. Let God's word be in your heart so that you know you will continuously walk in the way of the righteousness. As I complete, as I finish, on verse 30, it says, There is no wisdom or understanding or counsel against the Lord. And the horse is prepared for the day of battle, but the deliverance is of the Lord. Here we understand that there is no wisdom or understanding that is against the Lord. In our own way of life, we might think we might have wisdom, but which wisdom do we have? Which understanding do we have? Which counsel are we seeking? And the last one says the horse is prepared for the day of battle. This has just reminded us to say in all our daily lives, we always prepare. We always prepare whether it is in our from morning, our work, there is always preparation that has to be done. But when you continuously look at the way of the Lord, the Lord is simply saying, as you prepare, remember that in your preparation, the one who gives you victory is the Lord. It is our responsibility to prepare that's why the Lord says, unless the Lord builds the house, they labor in vain, those who build it. So the preparation is what we have to do. It says the day of the battle. There is always a battle in our life, but it takes the wisdom of God for us to know which battle am I in? The word of God already says in Ephesians, 
put on the full armor of God. It means every day we need to guide our heart. Every day we need to be on the full armor of Lord. And we need to remember the victory is for the Lord. It is the Lord who deliver us. So our victory is not guaranteed by our preparation, but our victory is guaranteed by the Lord who will give us the victory. No wonder you will see when you look at the Old Testament, people will prepare to go for the battle, but your enemy is also preparing. What will give you the wisdom? What will give you the understanding for you to become victorious is when the Lord gives you the victory. So I just want to pray that as you go through Proverbs 21 today, as you look at all the verses that the Lord has given us, you should continuously know that victory belongs to the Lord. There is no wisdom that we might have other than the wisdom of God. And we should continuously pray to say, God, may I be a woman who is righteous before your presence. Help me, Father, to watch over every word that I say. Help me, Father, to look at my heart and my desires. Guide my mouth, guide my tongue. Help me to preserve my soul in all that I do. As we continuously look at this Proverbs or at the led wisdom, continuously say, God, we need your wisdom. In every area of your, our life, we pray for wisdom that comes from above. Thank you, everyone, for logging in. Thank you, everyone, for this moment. And we'll see you tomorrow as we log in to do Proverbs 22. Thank you.